Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how I verified my Bitcoin Core full node software to make sure it wasn't tampered with. This is the new version 22 and note there's changes to the verification process. This video is for beginners. To overview today, uh, we're going to first skillfully navigate to Bitcoin Core's website. We're going to download three files, the DMG file, that's the software itself, the checksum file that has all the checksums, and the checksum signature file, which we'll use to verify the checksum file. Um, so we'll com calculate and compare checksums, we'll follow along with CORE's instructions, and we'll see how the verification process has changed. We'll do some internet research about core devs and especially try to confirm their fingerprint. We'll import a few trusted public keys into our uh, PGP keyring. Then we'll uh, verify the checksum file using our PGP software. And that's it, it's easy. But we need to have PGP installed and verified on our machine because note, all this Verification relies on your PGP software being authentic. So, may I recommend now pausing the video and going and watch, go and watch my how to verify PGP itself. And do that first. It's critical and it's easy. And you'll get practice. And then you'll be more confident. So, when I'm ready to go and download software, I like to verify the authenticity of the website itself by approaching it through different links. Because sometimes Google might bring you here. Oh, oh God, no. And if we look at bitcoin.org, uh, we can go down resources, Bitcoin Core, and they say the project's official website. So here we go, let's look at Wikipedia, that's pretty interesting, and then here's the GitHub, here's the GitHub repo, and we can also get here, and here's their Twitter page, and a link to the website, and are they the same? Are these three tabs identical? Okay, so we're confirmed at bitcoincore.org. We can go to the download section and for Mac we see two files. We want the DMG, that's the easily installable. This is the tarball, you gotta build it from source. So we can click on the DMG and save this. I already did. And these two files as well. We can click on and save these files. I already did. And the signature file save all these files. So I downloaded those files and put them in a folder on my desktop. The download. Here's the instructions for Mac. <coughs> so we want to download the software, the DMG file. We want to download the checksums file and the signature file for the checksums. So those three files we have in our folder. So the first three instructions are download the three files. Then we can open our terminal and so let's do that. And if you don't know where the terminal lives, you can always look for it. Okay, and the first thing we say, we wanna change directory to where we downloaded. So I downloaded everything and put everything in a folder on the desk on my desktop and I labeled the folder core 22 so here's the DMG file here's and look this is just a simple text file and if we look this is our software right here the OSX signed DMG and here is the checksum and we'll explain more about that in a minute but, so that's just a simple text file. And here's the signature file, which has everyone's signatures, and they're confirming the authenticity of this, of this information. Um, 
So we'll see how to do this in a second. So um, back to the instructions and they ask us to do this command. We'll do it two different ways. So we can uh, copy and paste uh, in this command. Oh no, what happened? Oh, because I didn't change directory. So I want to CD into the desktop and uh, I named my folder core22. So we cd change directory and scroll up, gets our old commands. And uh, we can look, this is good, we can look up and see, here it is, Bitcoin 22, sign DMG, and that's okay. So that's one way to do it. We can also do it like this. We can scroll up and use, because they're automatically checking these two files, but we can do it manually as well. So if we have this code, shawsome slash a256, and we drag the DMG file in here, you'll see the path pops up in the file. And so now we just hash that file, and when we did, we get this hash, this checksum. What's this start with? 3B, 3E. 3B, 3E. And we can manually check by looking in here. 3B, 3E. 2680. 2680. And we can compare. We can compare. Uh, so this is the other method. They don't talk about doing it like this, but you can compare and you can really see. We just crunched this away. We just crunched that shawsome or that hash from, from here. Uh, from this file and with this file this is our file and we're comparing it to this file where all of our friends said this file is authentic is that making sense so they say this is a good positive result and so that is checking the checksums we calculated the checksum and we compared it and everything was good. But the point is, how do we know that this, sorry, how do we know that this file isn't, isn't uh, a fake? So that's what this file is for. That's what the next GPG part is for. Load uh, and install and verify your GPG software. This is super important. If it's not verified, how can you trust everything else? So, go do that. Okay, number seven. Uh, this is interesting, so let's read it. Bitcoin releases are signed by a number of individuals, each with a unique public key. In order to recognize the validity of signatures, we must use GPD to load these public keys locally. Okay. Um, so you can find the developer's keys here. And then, so we'll go there in just a second, and then it says here you can use uh, this command and you can put this in the terminal and the output will, this is how to import new keys into your, so this is a command line. We don't have to do it this way, so let's not. Let's do it a different way. Let's do it all with the GUI, it's easier. Okay. So we got to import, so a number of individuals, uh, we need to load these public keys into our keychain. So here's where they are. Let's go here. And we can read the, this file contains the fingerprints and public keys. And again, they give us instructions uh, to refresh the keys and to uh, how to uh, import new ones. But again, we don't need to do that. Uh, so, here's the, so here's the file. But let's, again, let's do this with the GUI, that's easier. So, um, so we need to uh, import their keys. So the easier way to do this would be to just copy and paste someone's uh, fingerprint and bring that into your keychain and then look it up. Search for it. So, 
sometimes no key will be found. That's weird. But where Bitcoin Core isn't clear, and I think this could be, if someone isn't careful, could they could uh, make a mistake. Uh, let's look at number eight. It says, uh, it's recommended choose a few individuals who you find trustworthy and import their keys, uh, or import all the keys. Um, and again, we're gonna use these here. Um, but they don't talk about verifying fingerprints. And this is super important. If you start importing all these people, it, you know, it might look like them, but how do you know? How do you know that this is his actual fingerprint? Well, we have to do some internet research to find out. Okay, let's do some research. Sorry, Andrew Clausen, Sip Sorcery, but you're the first one on the list, so you get Googled. Uh, and we come up with all we come up with all these results. This being uh, an impressive one, I'm sure this guy is really cool. He's funded by La and Odell, and uh, but on GitHub. Oh, and if we also go to him on GitHub, we're especially looking to try to confirm his fingerprint, the fingerprint that is right here, 93cc, 93cc. So we looked at his, at his GitHub, it's not here. This page, nope. On his blog, nope. On his Twitter, nope. Awesome, but wouldn't this be a perfect spot to put his fingerprint? Yeah, and then, oh, sorry. And then I found it on Keybase, and if we, uh, okay, so if I think I searched by his name, and so then here's a fingerprint, but wait, that doesn't look right either. Uh, that's not the same fingerprint. So what I did was I copied this whole thing all the way down to here, and then I copied it. And when you do that in your clipboard, your PGP keychain will pop up, and uh, it'll ask, do you want to import him into the keyring? And so I did. And uh, so because I want to look to see uh, his sub keys and we can see he does have one sub key but again it's not the same fingerprint as we see here so after doing all this research I can't get any confirmation of this fingerprint uh, I'm sure our boy Aaron is a wicked kick-ass developer but I just don't trust the fingerprint so I'm gonna have to delete him out of my key ring for now Do some more research, and I'll show you what what good what a ve good verification looks like. Okay, so let's do uh, Ben Carmen. We uh, see his is a OAD8 OAD8, and so we Google for him. We find him on Twitter. Ah, oh, and he posts OAD8 on Twitter. He's got a really nice uh, website. We find them on Mastodon, on Bitcoin Hackers, again, OAD8. We go to GitHub, bang, he's there again. We confirm again, and again, and again. So this makes me super confident that uh, this is him, that, and that this is his fingerprint. So we can import this, so I feel confident importing this into my keychain the authenticity of Ben's fingerprint. So I imported it into my keychain. And there you see it. And now we can move on to the next part of the verification process. Number nine. They say verify the checksum file is PGP signed by the release signing a key. But can I explain that a different way? The way I would explain it is, this is the software we downloaded. We crunched that number before, the checksum, and we compared it to the one in this file. Now what we're gonna do is authenticate, authenticate, is that right? This file 
with a, using this file in our PGP software. So now we're just verifying this file and because this hash, right, we want to mash, match this hash. So that's what we're doing. So here is the command, gpg, and I think we will want to change into the home directory. So I'm just copying that command. And then at number 10, they talk about what is a good, good result. Um, and you can say, uh, a series of signatures, and a good one will look like this. OK, so let's see. So I think we're going to need to, uh, let's just try it. But I think we, oh, I'm, I'm sure, we're going to need to, oh. Well, there's something, but let's, <laughs> let's also change, because um, I put this file, I put these files in a folder on my desktop, core 22. Sorry. So we need to change directory. Whoops. Anywhere, it doesn't matter. We need to change directory into the desktop and then change again into this folder. So now I'm in the folder where these programs are. And now I can do the command and we see many, like they say, many results. Here is the command I just typed. And it's it, what it's saying is check these two and see which keys match. So we get some good signatures. And here's the good signature from Ben. And that's a confirmation. We're good. And the more people you put in, the more confirmations. If you don't put someone's it, uh, someone in, uh, you can see can't check the signature. There's no public key. But this is their fingerprint. If you want to put them in, if you want to check them out, you can uh, search for that fingerprint and check that person out. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this helped. Hit me up on Twitter if you uh, have any questions or critiques. And take good care. Hot all safe, everybody.